So please welcome expert in cell biology and genetics, Dr Emily Grossman. And we're joined by a maths teacher and a scientist, Dr Emily Grossman. Let's talk to scientist, Dr Emily Grossman. Uh, <laughs> is it true? It is true. Uh, the call sounds of domestic animals have always been thought to be totally genetic. But there are farmers who, in Somerset, who've been claiming for years that their cows moo with a sort of West Country drawl to their <laughs> moo. But the stu a study was done a little while ago on goats, where they actually took baby goats and they found that brother and sister goats, when they were babies, to be expected, they were sort of bleating similar to each other. But as soon as they were old enough to go out and form social groups and, and make friends, then they started bleating more like their mates and less like their brothers and sisters. So they were basically picking up or learning an accent. This is a show that's all about looking at the world in a different way. When I look at what goes on around us, where most people see one thing, I see something different. I see science. Is it true we only use 10% of our brain? <laughs> Maybe some people know. Yes. <laughs> it's Don't not look at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, not true. No, it's one of those myths. It's not actually true. They did uh, brain mapping studies where you look at how the brain's being used and actually all of the brain has a function and over the course of an average day we do use 100% of it. There are right. still some mysteries as to the exact function of some parts, like to do with consciousness and memory. Those areas are not so well understood, but we do use all of it. I use those analytical skills, whether it's specifically maths or just a way of thinking. I use that in everyday life all the time, whether it's, as you say, adding stuff up, working out how many coffees you can buy for a tenner, working out what's the best value holiday to go on, uh, working out how to fit your sofa through a door by turning it on its side. All of that is analytical skills and then mathematical it's skills. Reason. Everybody always says you mustn't put metals in the microwave. Yeah. Now, that is true. Don't put them in. However, the inside of the microwave is actually made of metal. Right. So metal itself isn't a problem. Metals conduct electricity. And so when they absorb the energy from the microwaves, if they have any sharp edges, like a fork, little prongs, yeah. the electrons in the metal will move around and they'll build up at the corners and that could cause a dangerous build up and the electrons can jump across and cause a spark which is called arcing. What are nipples for? <laughs> what are nipples for? I don't know. I asked you first. <laughs> It was a 750-watt microwave, that's what it says on the front, which means it uses 750 packets of energy, joules, each second. Right. And it took about three minutes to boil a cup of water. Right. So if we times that by three minutes and by 60 seconds, yeah. we get about 130, well, it's 135,000 joules of energy. Uh, no, we're missing a knot. Yeah, yes, I was. Right. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Carol Vorderman on countdown, isn't it? <laughs> Wherever you go, there is this kind of um, connection between being good at maths, being good at science, being good at anything technical, and being geeky, which I actually think is a really cool word. I describe me myself too. as no, a geek. Yeah. I'm cool geek. I'd like to be. <laughs> <laughs> this one's hot. Here we've got cold, here we've got hot. Yeah. Now we've got hot on the bottom. Yeah. So I'm going to do exactly the same. Yeah. And invert it over. Yeah. Look at well, that. would you look at that. So, what you can see happening is the hot water yeah. rising up to meet the cold and to mix with the cold. There's convection currents going on in this one. Here, you've got the hot water on top, so this cold water isn't mingling and the colours aren't mixing. The tongue's got four separate pairs of nerves leading from the back of the tongue straight the way through to the dog's brain through little holes in the back of its skull. Evolutionarily, our brains are hardwired to make us have warm and caring feelings when we see small children so that we protect them and look after them. And that's because there's a hormone called oxytocin that's released in the brain, which makes us feel all soft and fluffy when we see cute things. And um, interestingly, if they put a picture of a cute puppy in the wallet, more of them came back as well, but not as much as the baby. Then you can start talking about why do birds fly? Well, OK, they flap, but what about when they're soaring? Why are they soaring? Why don't they just plop down? And you say that to someone, they go, oh, yeah, I hadn't thought of that. And it's like, OK, so those are heat currents. That's thermal convection, convection currents that are rising up through the air and keeping the birds in the sky. So if you start to make science something that people actually um, find relevant in their lives, then it becomes interesting, and then that's your jumping-off point. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, time out. <laughs>